Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Terry and I appreciate you watching our broadcast. Got some great things to share with you. And we just want you to know how much we appreciate your support. We appreciate your emails. We appreciate uh, your letters and your prayer requests and your testimonies. It's just a joy every time we receive a letter or some form of contact from someone who says, I'm watching the television broadcast. Yeah. Don't you enjoy that? I love it. I read every one of them, and yeah. I love it. I'm so thankful, and I appreciate every time you write to us. So keep them coming. You know, today, Dad, you're going to be sharing a message on the hand of God. Yeah. And this message is actually going to prove to us that we can make Satan pay us back for everything he's stolen. Right including years. You know, some of you may have had a lot of years stolen that you thought were just a bunch of wasted years. Uh, there's a lot of restoration that we're entitled to that we're not experiencing. And I say we, I'm talking about the body of Christ in general, mm -hmm. that we could be experiencing if we lay hold upon this revelation. Right. And uh, so I'm excited about sharing it with you. And I believe that soon we're going to get your testimony of how the hand of God brought you out of bondage and brought restoration in your life. I believe that. You ready yeah. to teach it? I'm ready. All right. I want to look at Isaiah chapter 66 and in verse 12. But just before I read verse 12, I noticed in my Bible at the beginning of chapter 66, there's a little a heading or a title right above it. And it says, judgment and mercy. That's what the hand of God is about. The hand of God, every time you see the phrase, the hand of God or the hand of the Lord in the Bible, number one, it is a reference to God's power being expressed in judgment. Or number two, it's God's power being expressed in blessing, favor, kindness, or mercy. And right there at the heading of this chapter, it says judgment and mercy. And it starts off with, thus saith the Lord. Then in verse 12, it says, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. And verse 14 says, And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice, your bones shall flourish like an herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. So right there, the hand of the Lord, what does it mean? What does it represent? It means God's power being displayed or manifested in the form of judgment against his adversary. And then it also means God's power being displayed or manifested in the form of blessing and favor and kindness and mercy in behalf of his people. Now, why is it so important that we get a revelation of this? Because many of you right now are under attack. Many of you are in bondage of some kind financial bondage, physical bondage, some kind of bondage is, is, is involved or you're involved in some kind of bondage in your life right now. You're under a lot of pressure. You're, you're, some of you are at the point where you don't know what else to do. It looks like nothing's working. Well, then you need to listen up very closely because I believe this revelation can change that, can turn things around in your life right now. Now, once again, the hand of the Lord. It is either a manifestation of judgment or punishment or recompense against the adversary, and it is blessing and favor in behalf of God's people. Now, I've been sharing how that we can see this very clearly in the book of Exodus, where God is bringing his people out of the bondage of Egypt. And I want to read this once again in Exodus 3, Verse 20 and 21, it says, God speaking, and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when they go, they shall not go empty handed. So once again, notice what happens when the hand of the Lord is in manifestation. It's going to bring judgment on the adversary. It's going to bring blessing and favor on God's people. Now, our adversary is Satan. That is very clear in the Word of God. Satan is a thief. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So when you ask for a manifestation of the hand of the Lord, then what you're asking for is, God bring judgment on my adversary, the devil, and God bring favor and blessing upon me. That's what a manifestation of the hand of the Lord is all about. Now, all through Exodus, 
God told Moses to tell the children of Israel that after they had been delivered out of the uh, bondage of Egypt and after this favor had come upon their lives where they carried out the gold and the silver of Egypt and they entered into a state of abundance, God said, tell them, don't ever forget that the reason this happened was by the hand of the Lord. Listen once again, Exodus 13, 14. And it shall be when your children ask you in time saying, what is this? How did this happen? Thou shalt say unto them, by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from Egypt and from the house of bondage. So notice God made it very clear that when the children of Israel were to talk about this, they were to remind themselves, remind their children and their children's children that it was by the hand of the Lord. So that says to me that it was a revelation that was to be perpetual. It was a revelation that God wanted handed down from one generation to another. And yet today, if you ask most people in the body of Christ today, what does it mean when we see in the scripture a manifestation of the hand of the Lord? Most Christians wouldn't have a clue, couldn't tell you anything, if anything, very little about what it means. But God says it is a revelation that he wanted passed down from generation to generation. And that's why it's so important that you and I get this revelation today. Now, later, when Moses was faced with what appeared to be another impossible task, listen to what God said to him in Numbers eleven twenty three. Is the Lord's hand wax short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Notice every time Moses was faced with another impossible looking situation, what did God remind him of? The hand of the Lord. He said, listen, Moses, I got you out of Egypt. I got you out of that bondage and I did it by my hand. Now, here you are facing another impossible looking situation. And the question I have for you, is my hand shortened? In other words, go back to that revelation. Expect a manifestation of the hand of the Lord. In the Amplified, it says it this way. Has the Lord's hand, the Lord's ability, the Lord's power become inadequate? Notice God always brought him back to the hand of the Lord. And he's saying to him, Moses, my hand delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. It brought them into abundance. And if I can do it before, I can do it again. My hand has not lost its power, has not lost its ability, and it has not become inadequate. So he's telling him, when you face impossible looking situations, expect a manifestation of the hand of the Lord. Now, later, much later, listen to what David said in Psalm 78, verses 41 and 42. Yea, they, speaking about the children of Israel, they turned back, tempted God, and limited the Holy One of Israel. Then it says, they remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Notice it says they limited God. How did they limit God? It says one of the ways they limited God is they forgot about the hand of the Lord. They did not remember how that his hand delivered them out of Egypt, how his hand delivered them out of bondage, how his hand brought abundance into their lives. They forgot about that. And as a result of it, it said they limited God. How many times do you suppose you and I have limited God in our lives today simply because we didn't have a revelation on the, on the hand of the Lord and what it will do and what it can produce if we get a revelation of it? So once again, we need this revelation today. Many of you are facing situations right now that will not turn except through manifestations of the hand of the Lord in your behalf. Once again, what does it mean? When the hand of the Lord is in manifestation, it means that judgment is coming to your adversary and favor and blessing is coming to you. Praise God. Now, doesn't that sound like something you need right now in your life? Now, listen to this scripture. I read this scripture for years and years and years, and I really didn't understand what it meant until I got this revelation on the hand of the Lord. Now, listen to this. Maybe it's a familiar scripture to you. Maybe you struggled with it in the past just like I did. Listen to Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 11. 
thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning, listen to this, the work of my hands command ye me. Now I'd read that and I'd think, Lord, what in the world are you saying? He said, concerning the works of his hands, command him. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a little bit too strong. I mean, I I understand God commanding me, but me having the right to command the hand of the Lord. I mean, I just backed off from that and I thought there's, you know, that's got to be a misprint. I mean, who in their right mind would ever command God to do anything? Now, let's listen to this very closely. Notice what it says, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. God is actually inviting us to command the work of his hands. Now, as I studied this, I began to get a powerful revelation of it. In the Strong's Concordance, it states that the word command here in Isaiah 45, 11 means to appoint, to appoint. It also means to assign or to commission. Now, I can deal with that a whole lot better than I can command. I mean, I just can't imagine me standing up before God and say, I command you to do thus and so. But here it says that it literally means to give him an assignment. It literally means to commission him to do something. Now, that reminds me of James chapter 4, where it says, you have not because you ask not. In other words, God is saying, I want to do these things for you, but you're not asking me to do it. I want you to give me an assignment. I want you to commission me to do this. My hand can bring you out of bondage. My hand can bring you into freedom. My hand can smite your lack and my hand can bring you into abundance. But what I need is your giving me an assignment to do it. Commission me to do it. That's what command ye the work of his hands means. Now, Another meaning of it is loose me to work in your behalf. That's what God is saying. Loose me to work in your behalf. You know, many years ago, I was going to Kenya to do some missionary work and uh, to build churches and pastor seminars, open air crusade, and and a number of projects that we were doing in that nation. Uh, Dr. Oral Roberts called me. And he said, uh, Jerry, I understand you're getting ready to go <clears throat> to Kenya. He said, uh, I'd like to go with you. And so we talked about it and, and uh, we set the date and he flew to Dallas. He and Evelyn flew to Dallas, met with Carolyn and I. And then uh, he and I got on the airplane and we flew to uh, London, England, and then we flew on into Nairobi. When we got to Nairobi, uh, we had some meetings with government officials. I was getting ready to build a medical center there. And then I chartered an airplane and we flew to Kakamega, Kenya, which is on the border of Uganda. This is where we were going to build that clinic. And it's also where we were uh, dedicating some new churches we'd built and to do an open air crusade and pastor seminars. So when we got there, we got checked into the hotel we were staying in. I told Brother Roberts, I said, Brother Roberts, I've got an extremely busy day. Uh, If you'd like, when I get back, I'll have dinner with you. And then if you'd like to go to the meeting tonight, fine. If you'd like to just rest in, that'll be fine too. He said to me, made a statement to me, and I'd never heard anybody say anything quite like this before. He said, now, Jerry, I'm here as your guest. I'm here to serve you. And anything you want me to do, You just command me to do it. When he said that, I looked at him. Now, this is my spiritual grandfather. This is a man who's taught me much, has imparted into my life. I mean, not only that, I mean, just lay aside the spiritual part. He's my elder. And my parents taught me to respect my elders. And you don't go around commanding your elders to do anything. And when he said, Jerry, anything you want me to do while I'm here, just command me to do it. I said, Brother Roberts, That's very kind of you, but I said, that is not going to happen. I said, it's the other way around. Anything you want me to do for you, you just command me to do it. He looked me right straight in the eye and he said, whose trip is this? I said, well, it's my trip. He said, 
did I ask to come with you or did you ask to come with me? I said, you asked to come with me. He said, then I'm here to serve you. And he said, and anything you want me to do, all you do is you come to me and say, oh, Roberts, I command you to do this. I am here to serve you. I said, Brother Roberts, I understand what you're saying, but I just don't think I could do that. He said, I'm your servant and I want you to command me to do whatever you want me to do. Do you understand me? I said, yes, sir, I do. I went to my room and I thought, well, that is not going to happen. I cannot imagine me walking up, standing in the presence of Oral Roberts and saying to him, I command you to do this. However, about four days into that meeting, I realized that most of the pastors that I was preaching to had gotten saved in Oral Roberts' crusade in Kenya in 1969 and had surrendered their life to the ministry while he was in that great crusade in Kenya in 1969. When I realized this, I thought, well, he needs to come and minister to them and lay hands upon them and impart into them. So I knocked on his door one morning and I said, Brother Roberts? He said, yes. Are you ready for breakfast today? I said, yes, sir, I am. But after breakfast, I said, I just want you to know I feel a command coming on. He grinned at me. And I said it, you know, humbly and, and in a little bit of shaking. And he said, uh, I feel a command coming on. I, or I said, I feel a command coming on. And he grinned at me and he said, what do you want me to do? I said, Brother Roberts, these pastors that I'm ministering to, most of them got saved in your crusade in 1969. And I command you to come and preach to them, to lay your hands upon them and impart into them. He smiled and he said, as soon as we finish breakfast, I'll be your servant and I'm ready to go. Now, we got finished with breakfast. We got in our little van, drove over to where the meeting was being conducted. The ministers didn't know that Oral Roberts was going to come and minister to them that morning. I had him in a room waiting. I, I set the stage for it. And I said, now, many of you got saved and heard the call to preach under Oral Roberts ministry in 1969. And he's here today to make an impartation into your life. Well, obviously they were excited. Brother Roberts came out and he said to me as he was going to the platform, he said, no, Brother Jerry, I'm, 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 I'm a much older man now today. And he said, I can't preach as long as I used to. And he said, and I can't pray for as many people as I used to. So he said, at best, I may be able to give you 30 minutes preaching and then I'll lay hands on as many of them as I can. And if you'll get me a, a chair or a stool to sit on, then I'll pray it for as many as I can. But I'm much older now and I, I don't know how much of this I can do. I said, that's fine. He got up to preach. Now listen to me. He got up to preach. 30 minutes later, he's still preaching. 45 minutes later, he was still preaching. An hour later, he was still preaching. An hour and a half later, I got up, walked up to him while he's preaching. I said, I command you to stop. And he grinned. I said, lay your hands on these people. And he laid hands on those ministers. And when he got tired, we put him on a stool and he laid hands on the rest of them. And it was a glorious meeting. But I got a revelation. What Oral Roberts was saying was this, Jerry, I'm here. Why would I be here to just sit in a room all day? I'm here. Give me an assignment. Give me a commission. That's exactly what God is saying to us. God is saying, I'm the creator of the universe. I can take I can handle your adversary. I can make him pay back everything that he's stolen from you. And I can bring favor and blessing on your life. Give me an assignment concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. And how do we do that? Just like they did in the book of Acts, the Bible says that they prayed. And listen how they prayed in Acts 4, 29 and 30. They said, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants with all boldness that they may speak the word by stretching forth thine hand. Notice in the early church, they had a revelation of the hand of the Lord and they said, God, stretch forth your hand. That's what you need to do right now. If you're under pressure, if you're in bondage, God is saying, give me an assignment. Commission me. So I'm going to encourage you right now. Pray this prayer. Pray, God, I beseech thee, stretch forth your hand. Smite my bondage. Smite my debt. Smite this sickness. Deliver me from my adversary. Bring me out of this bondage. 
Give me freedom, give me favor, and give me blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And you just watch what is about to happen in your life. Hey, I'll be back in just a few moments. Watch this special announcement first. Today's message is just a small sampling of the rich, powerful teaching you'll find in Jerry Savelle's DVD, The Hand of God. In this revealing message, you'll receive the very principles that have enabled people all over the world to overcome their problems and experience God's blessings. The same results can be yours today, too. As you watch this DVD, you'll discover how God can restore to you what the devil has stolen, the secret to praying and getting results, how the hand of God can save you from trouble, and much more. As our way of saying thank you for your gift of $15 or more, we'd like to send you your own copy of Jerry Savelle's popular DVD teaching, The Hand of God. And for a limited time when you contact us, Jerry would also like you to have this special bonus book, Are You Tired of Sowing Much and Reaping Little? With it, you'll discover the surprising reasons why many of God's people don't experience the results they should and what to do about it. This message contains the answers you've been looking for. So don't wait. Call or click now with your special gift of just $15 or more. Visit us online at jerrysavelle.org or call 800-211-4834 to request your copy of Jerry's important DVD teaching, The Hand of God. When you do, we'd also like to give you the book, Are You Tired of Sowing Much and Reaping Little? What a powerful revelation that is to find out that you could actually be limiting God by not remembering His hand. Yeah. So if you'll remember His hand, God could be unlimited in your life. You know, I really, really want you to get this DVD on the hand of God. The only way you can really get a revelation of something is to hear it over and over and over and let it get into your spirit the way it got into Dad's spirit mm -hmm. and the way I've learned it now. So get this DVD on the hand of God is such a powerful, powerful message that you need to get a revelation of. When you order this message on the hand of God, we're going to give you for free this little mini book, or it's not a mini book, it's bigger than that, but it's called, Are You Tired of Sowing Much and Reaping Little? Powerful revelation in here to prevent you from just always feeling like you're throwing money away, not seeing any kind of harvest. There's a reason for that. Yeah. So, Dad, I mean, it's amazing to think that we could be limiting God. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be praying about stuff over and over and over and wondering why in the world I'm not seeing results, yeah. but limiting God by not remembering His hand. You know, how many times have, have most Christians ever heard somebody pray that? Lord, stretch forth your hand. Mm -hmm. Or God, I'm asking for a manifestation of the hand of the Lord. We know to pray in the name of Jesus. We know to pray, you know, in faith, believe we receive when we pray. But how many people actually pray, and Lord, I'm asking you to stretch forth your hand. There's a power in that that belongs to the body of Christ that we need to tap into right now. Wow, that's awesome. And you said that, I mean, it's a revelation to finally figure out Satan is the thief. Yeah. He's the one you need to be mad at. It's not that person. It's not that ex-husband, that ex-wife, that former boss. Satan is the thief. He's the one you need to charge all of your anger, all of your hurt, all of your pain towards. But then take it a step further mm -hmm. and make him pay you back everything right. he has stolen from you. Right. You know, the Lord actually said to you, my people are letting their adversary get away with too much. Yeah, the funny thing a, a lady said to me one time, I said, Brother Jerry, I heard that message. It really blessed me. She said, but I got one question. Satan stole my husband. Am I supposed to believe for seven back? I said, no, how about one seven times better? That's good. <laughs> seven times better. Clear that Amen. up. Yeah. <laughs> so we want you to get this. This is the last week to offer this, this DVD on the hand of God, a powerful DVD. If you're not used to watching DVDs, you usually listen to CDs. This is one of those you'll want to watch, yeah. you know, to really get a revelation of it. Now, when you order the hand of God, we're going to give you this for free are you tired of sowing much and reaping little? This is a powerful book. It'll probably clear up some questions you have on why it feels like you're giving in every offering and you're not seeing a harvest. Yeah. There is a reason for that. This is a short little book that you can read that quick and start applying it to your own life. 
So, Dad, thank you for sharing on the hand of God. <laughs> I'm expecting testimonies now. Yeah. We prayed, and people are going to be praying this way, and I'm expecting you to contact this ministry and share your testimony so that we can share it with others and it'll inspire them. Yeah. This is one of the ways we restore this revelation. You know, I've noticed in studying revivals, Terry, and I believe the church is headed for a brand new revival. Yeah. One of the things that not only happens is God's people get their zeal back, get their fire back, but also lost revelations are restored. And that's what this is all about. A lost revelation, the hand of the Lord, is coming back to the church and it's going to impact your life in a powerful way. We'll see you again next week. Today's message is just a small sampling of the rich, powerful teaching you'll find in Jerry Savelle's DVD, The Hand of God. In this revealing message, you'll receive the very principles that have enabled people all over the world to overcome their problems and experience God's blessings. The same results can be yours today, too. As you watch this DVD, you'll discover how God can restore to you what the devil has stolen, the secret to praying and getting results, how the hand of God can save you from trouble, and much more. As our way of saying thank you for your gift of $15 or more, we'd like to send you your own copy of Jerry Savelle's popular DVD teaching, The Hand of God. And for a limited time when you contact us, Jerry would also like you to have this special bonus book, are you tired of sowing much and reaping little? With it, you'll discover the surprising reasons why many of God's people don't experience the results they should and what to do about it. This message contains the answers you've been looking for. So don't wait. Call or click now with your special gift of just $15 or more. Visit us online at jerrysavelle.org or call 800-211-4834 to request your copy of Jerry's important DVD teaching, The Hand of God. When you do, we'd also like to give you the book, Are You Tired of Sowing Much and Reaping Little? Every week, Jerry Savelle Ministries International is making a powerful difference in the lives of people around the world. But that's only possible because of the financial support of friends like you. That's why we'd like to invite you to join us as we continue to take the power of God's Word to a global audience in such great need. So call the number on your screen to discover more about Jerry Savelle Ministries today. Both Jerry and his daughter Terry Savelle Foy invite you to explore our other ministry resources on the web at jerrysavelle.org. Join us again next week as you continue your journey to discovering God's blessing in your life, where God can transform your circumstances and you can discover your destiny.